Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Elm Creek with me, Simulation for the Nation. We're continuing on with our Let's Play, uh, our walkthrough series here. A series that we originally started uh, back on the very, very first early access of Farming Simulator 22. And we're continuing it because A, well, I've put quite a bit of time into it so far. B, I quite like this map. I've done quite a bit of work to it. And I think it looks pretty cool where we've got ourselves set up here. A few rough edges that we need to sort out, but it's all looking good. Uh, and yeah... I just like to use some different equipment, really. I had thought about doing a start from scratch series going on Elm Creek, and I, was, I just thought, you know what? Let's just capitalize on what we've got. So we'll keep going. Uh, it is uh, November. Uh, we have, if we look through our fields, currently we've got a hired worker driving our sugar beet harvester. We're just finishing off a field there that we've released. We've got bales of cotton to shift from 42, 53, and 31. These two fields going to get plowed in together. This is wheat that we've planted. I am in this field at the moment, plowing in these two fields with a monster plow. It looks fantastic. It really, really does. Uh, yeah, and we're uh, we're just trying to get the farm ready to go. I do believe at this stage in time, everything has been harvested that we own, which is great. We even got a whole big field of hay from 71. Of course, that needs to go and um, be collected. But yeah, we're, we're making some good old progress here, which is always what you want to see. As you can see from all of our fields, there's a lot of cultivation work that we can do. Lots of fields that can be uh, plowed into each other just to make them a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to function with. And that's what we're going to do today. But we're, we're going to drive over in our case because it's got the mulch on the back. And I want to set that to work as well. Uh, but as you see there, it is... Everything's ticking along. We do need to get a few bits and pieces for the animals. We'll do that at some point. Uh, later on... Not in this video, video, but at some point, we do need to also go and take a drive up to the, the mill at the very north edge there. I left a the skid steer up there, so we need to take the truck up because there's a mountain of flour that we need to bring down and take to the bakery. So, lots to do, as always. Uh, but yeah, we'll just keep cracking on, really. And then soon, we're going to be in planting season. For anyone who hasn't seen any of the live streams on Elm Creek, this, the area behind this uh, shed here... This is all going to be turned into orchards when the uh, planting season is right. And we've got our bees there ready to go as well. They're producing honey at a rate of knots. And the hens need some food, but they're doing very well as well. So everything is looking good. Uh, I'm happy with how we're making some progress. Lots of good machines on this farm, which are really good to get used to there. Uh, I did just take quite a chunk of money out here because I want to make it a little bit more dependent upon itself. I had a large amount of money in there just for... The purchase of uh, pips of live streams really and making sure that if somebody wanted to test a, um, a mod or see a mod in action or see a tractor in action i could get it in without worrying about the effects but what we'll probably even do thanks to the power tools mod is actually just take a bit more money out there again uh, so we're gonna go minus we had seven hundred seventy thousand there let's minus four hundred thousand so we're now down to three hundred seventy seven thousand which is still a lot of money don't get me wrong there but uh you know it is gonna it's our operating costs it's our overheads there i think so we will just keep that amount now what i'm gonna do like i say there are two fields that i want to get mulched in there's some cotton there that we need to mulch over uh and that is actually you know what we'll just creep in through the back of the fire station here they won't mind i'm sure it's going nice and quietly they'll barely even know we're here there you go uh, so there's a huge big cotton bell there. I have no idea what we're going to do with that yet. Uh, we'll have to figure that one out. But first of all, we are going to go into... This is a... was a maize field uh, for grain that we lifted off. So we're going to uh, mulch this one over. These fields have a track all the way up and down the middle of it. Which I can only assume was for just running the grain cart up to the end for and back. Because it doesn't connect anywhere. And as a result of that, we're going to be creating an absolute mega field. What we're going to do though is lower you down first. This case, by the way, sounds epic when you put it onto this mulcher. Absolutely beastly. And I am here for it. I'm just going to go around and do a headland here and then we'll leave it and connect onto the, the big plow. But yeah, as you'll see from the map here, as I bring up this, the active PDA, as you can see from field 33, 34, where the John Deere is parked up, the, the roads don't really go anywhere. And to my mind, I don't really understand why. So what we're going to do is just plow in 31, 30 together now. And plow in 33 and 34 together now as well. 32 in the middle there actually has a crop in it. So that makes plowing that one in a little tricky. But what we might do, because we didn't, it didn't cost us too much and it's part of an operating overhead really, we could just plow that in now as well, get it done, 
and then we'll be ready to go for the for the spring that might be what we're looking to do in there just a bit of a an elf uh, set of capital just to help us get get ourselves going there really i think that might be the best way to look at it uh but yeah we'll have to mulch in all of that cotton there as well once we get those bales shifted i need to uh, figure out how we're going to do that um probably shimmy those onto the the low loader we have somehow some way uh but yeah otherwise i really like having a bigger farm i love playing with some of the bigger equipment as well as the smaller stuff that we have on hope belleron but this is just great uh, really is nice. It's a beautiful tractor, as you can see. Mulches are fantastic. Now, this is not the quickest mulcher. You can obviously use the Dal the Dalba roller, but this one is just meaty. You come on outside as well. Just listen to that. Absolutely sensational there. So we will... I love the texture off the back of it. Uh, yeah, this is all going to go very, very well indeed. I'm just going to do one headland here, just so Hyde Worker has the parameters in which it's going to be... Uh, working on with today without getting into any further trouble and then we can get this all taken care of really uh really really loving the idea of building this into one big field there we've got a big x9 combine and i just feel like some of the smaller fields that we have particularly around the south side of the main yard there the in the 40s they're just by the time you get going there it's two passes and it's ready to move on so i want to change that correct the ways of that a little bit and this will be a great opportunity to do so i find uh, let's make sure we get that bit there. But most of it. Perfect stuff. So I hope everything is going well. Let me know what you're getting up to there. How you're settling into Elm Creek. I was about to, as I said earlier, I was about to start a start from scratch series or some kind of series like that on Elm Creek. And I thought, you know what? Let's not start it in the middle. Let's go for a bit of a spin. So I went down to the southeast corner there, down to field 81, 82. There's a whole new yard down there I hadn't experienced. This is crazy. This map is so big. I've been on this for about 20 hours so far. And there's places that I still hadn't noticed or experienced in game. Which was just, to me, incredible. That's a great thing about this game. It really, really is. And the work that's gone into Elm Creek is spectacular. It really sets it up for a great map. Uh, I'm trying to diversify this farm out as much as I can as well. I mentioned we will be bringing in orchards. Uh on hot Belleron, we do have the uh, greenhouse setup which is great i love that but i want to bring in orchards specifically onto this map and we've got uh, livestock we've got cattle on hot Belleron, and we're gonna have sheep and pigs over here with a few hens as well so uh, trying to keep the two separate parallels really uh no overlap them always makes those series a little bit more interesting uh, all right you can go down and you can take over there and I'll jump out. Thank you very much. Off you go. Wonderful stuff. Okay, now we're going to go for a walk through the cotton. Oh, I guess it's stripped cotton. Now this really does need to be worked down and worked in. There's some good organic matter here to kick into the soil. Uh, and we will be doing that with the aid of a big plow, uh, which I can't wait uh, a lot we got attacked by weeds over here as well this field didn't get plowed in we just direct drilled into this one which was a really allowed the weeds to come flying through just look at the state of this field uh, so i don't know if we'll keep it like this or maybe perhaps we'll leave and uh, plow this over that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world it's gonna take a while to plow this over and start stripping the middle that got missed as well uh, but we could leave it. Uh, since we worked on this field, we have also made a few changes. We have got rid of what the 9R John Deere. We kept the 9RT. We got the case that you've seen over there because it's a little smaller, a little bit more agile. It's still a huge tractor nonetheless, but it makes it a little bit smaller. Uh, and we've got a 4755 going there as well, which is more than enough horsepower for what we need. Uh, but this one just... I mean, just look at this plow. This plow is incredible. Absolutely adore this thing. Uh, the animations of it are fantastic as well there the motion for it turning over is just simply brilliant and yeah i think the work that's gone into this is very very good indeed and so without any further ado we're gonna have a, a bit of a roll over here what we're gonna do is just lift you up i need to get us into a gear we're in manual mode here so i'm gonna stick us up into something around eight or nine it's probably not high enough still but we will uh We'll see. Let's kick this one over as well. I love the way the rear plow goes all the way over there. And spins itself around there. Gets set. And then the front plow goes back down again. I just think it's brilliant. Very, very impressive bit of detailing on this. 
Uh, and you do cover some incredible ground in one swing here. This really didn't take long to get to this stage of the field. Uh, so we'll just stick that down out there. And we're off to the races again. Listen to that power there. We'll probably take up a gear or two. There you go. And we're off. So for now, you can see there's a stone track going down that side. We'll plow up to at least there. We'll get this all done. And then that is really us in a good position just to decide what we're going to do for the next step. I personally think I might just keep going. Uh, plow in those weeds and that, uh, uh, get rid of those weeds as well. Uh, it does appear from the work that we've been doing recently. I did a great video, video last week around uh, improving your crop yields. Uh, and it does look like as well, if you do plow over your ground there, you'll really reduce any chance of any we weeds for that year. If you direct drill in there, there's going to be a bigger problem with your weeds. So that is a, a payoff there. Yes, you're using more fuel. Yes, it's taking more time. You have to buy a plow if you didn't already have one. But ultimately, you know, I think those benefits do pay off for themselves though, because you're not paying for herbicide, for example. But all things that you should consider. Oh, and what I didn't do is turn on create fuels because I can see we missed a bit in the middle there. We'll have to go back and get that. But yeah, everything else is looking mightily impressive. Beautiful soil here once the, the packers have rolled over it there. And it's looking very, very good. Very happy with this. Just look at the animations on the furrows there as well. It's another nice little update for FS22. It does look very good. That and the new fill planes that you can see when you're filling up trailers. Like it an awful lot. All right then. And then coming up to the top, you'll just click down a gear or two. We're going to lift out about there. Out she comes. Spin herself around of us so slightly. You get quite a turn circle on this as well without ever fear and locking it. Over there she goes. Now, of course, if you if and when you have to come to service this, it is going to cost you an absolute fortune. But don't worry about that just yet. We don't have to do that anytime soon. There you go. Back up. 12th is a good gear to work into. Ooh, my sugar beet driver is full. All right. How much has he got left to do? Interesting thing when you start a field uh, a map, you've always got to figure out, okay, so what crops are there in there that I don't particularly want anything to do with? And what crops are there that I will be interested in, will use, but it's not ideal. Sugar beet falls into the interesting and not ideal uh, because that means you've got, to, you've got to acquire a harvester, which costs a lot of money. Uh, so you got to figure out what you're going to do with that and rent one. And we've had to rent one for the size of field 50, which is not particularly big. Uh, so what we'll go and do is go jump on over. See what's happening over there when we get to the end of this row. Uh, and then we can take over if we need to take over. And we'll just finish that small little bit of a field off there as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep clicking, clicking along through here. We'll make sure we don't miss that. But you can see I didn't have creative fields on. So it did indeed uh, miss that little stretch in the middle, but that's no big shake. We can get that one figured out nice and quickly. Because if you miss bits like that, that is what causes the stripes in the other field over the road there where it just doesn't uh, clean those up properly, uh, which we want to avoid. Now we'll make sure we're still clearing off everything there, which we are. A lot of stones coming up in this field, though. Most of these appear to be relatively small. So we might get away with just sticking the uh, uh, roller on here, but I don't know. Uh, what we may do is try and stick the roller on. Anything that's left is bringing the big machine just to pick them all up. But uh, yeah, there's a bit of a different, uh, a bit different shape and size in those, some of those. So we'll have to have a look see. Now I've noticed that we are still getting charged for that... Uh, all the sugar beet harvester so i'm going to figure out what's going on over there and then we'll come back and continue with the plow excellent stuff problem solved everything is looking good over that side oh we have to make sure we miss all that yeah so after we get this field plowed up i think we're just going to plow it now we're going to leave it over the winter there uh maybe roll it down get it ready to go uh and then it'll be ready for the spring let me know because we're not going to get on to doing all of that today but let me know if you think we should just plow through everything and continue to make one hyper big field or what we should do because i am very keen to do it 
and it'll be pretty cool to see a field the size of uh, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. It's going to be pretty, pretty big indeed. So we'll have to have a look at that one. Same thing you could do with your own 68 and 69. You could quite easily stick those into one as well. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we're going to keep pushing along. Uh, and then we'll see how everything comes together. Harvest wise, everything is done now. Everything kind of yielded okay. Some of it not so good. Uh, but then you expect that when you just take over the fields. Uh, we've got as much of it as we can in the storage still. Like I said, we have an absolute mountain of wheat flour to go and shift from up at the grain mill there. We already shifted one load from there down to the bakery, which is just, well, pretty much just over there, to be honest. So we'll have to go and do that at some stage as well. But uh, yeah, otherwise it's been okay. It's been okay. What we need to do now is really focus on making sure we have the best yields possible. And we're doing that by plowing everything over the first. Everything that can be mulched in is being mulched in as well. Uh, and we'll we'll make a bit more progress that way. That allows us just to be able to, to really control what our yields look like moving forward. Which I always think is crucially, crucially important. All right, and now we need to just get ready to turn around. It's getting smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter in this little corner to turn, but we'll figure out how we can do that. Uh, and then we'll be off to the races. Okay, just have to get a bit of a tighter lock on. bigger, A bigger, wider loop around the corner here. Get that looped over. But anyway, oh, a lot of chunk of metal here, that's for sure. I do like the Parallax Occlusion map and on the track here, though. That does look very, very good. Maps, the uh, little th tracks do look very uh, 3D. It's a very impressive technology they've implemented there. Uh, we're going to just stick you down into the ground there. Ooh, bit of stress on that plow, but never mind. We're through. I do love the soil texture on the plow furrow as well there. Again, through the Parallax Occlusion mapping, but it just looks so good at granted it looks very soft land looks very much like boys land as you would say but it's uh still very impressive nonetheless there uh, to see these this step up from the 2d texture that we've had so for so many years this look very very good the animations uh, across the board are just very interesting as well got a bit of a twitch on of an electric pipe cable there but never mind not quite sure what's causing that uh okay get out of here bits come on I would hate to think how much once I get through this field with all the metal parts I've kind of burned through here and the paint and the debris and the servicing, how much is going to cost me in uh, in servicing here. It's going to be a lot of money. Uh, kind of understandably so given just the sheer size of this unit. I'm going to click down a gear again though. Click down another one. We'll just let that square up on the edge. Drag it forward a bit more and there we go. And around the corner. Perfect stuff. So... We're going to just push through. Uh, we'll carry on with this one. We're going to bring an update once a week or so on this map here because I don't get as much time to stream here now as I did. Uh, so I hope you will still enjoy to see just how we're getting on there, how we're progressing as a farm. So I think it's going pretty well. Uh, let me know what you think as well. And uh, we will just keep cracking along. Tell me down in below in the comments if you think we should make this into a, a mega, mega field because I will more than happily oblige. Even if it means sacrificing a couple of thousand dollars in seed costs there at start again. I'm willing to do that for a mega field if we need to. Uh, but yeah, keep me posted. Until then, thank you ever so much for watching this little update from me, Simulation for the Nation, here on Elm Creek. And we'll see you all in the next one. Do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing as always, and we'll catch you later.